Oh. Hi, guys. Hello. I'm Caitlin. I'm Dimitri. And we're from the Tandem Restaurant at 18th and uh, Fond du Lac Avenue on Milwaukee's north side. And we brought you some chicken today. We nice. love we you. Love chicken. Best awesome. Ice cream. Uh, so I'm going to talk while you guys pick at your chicken. I'll oh, break why. the ice. Yeah, yeah break like, the ice. I'm Just okay jump with in. that. So the Tandem, we are a restaurant. We specialize in soul food, comfort food, and above all else, we specialize in jobs. Our mission as a restaurant is to provide employment to the youth of the north side of Milwaukee. We provide on-the-job training, particularly for those who are hard to employ. And we start you from scratch. That's really our mission. That's our goal. That's what we try and do. What you're doing is very noble. How many employees do you have today? 24. 24 already, wow. Caitlin, tell me a little bit about why you're doing this. I mean, why not just a straight restaurant yeah. or... Um, I used to be a high school English teacher, and I kind of overcorrected when the school systems were, I thought, really rigged against young people, and decided, whatever, I'm gonna start cooking food. That seems fun, and if I screw up somebody's lunch, it's not their life. And I learned how to cook on the job. And I was able to learn everything in that kitchen, and when it was time for me to really want to do something and make my next step, I miss teaching. I decided why not try? You know, I talk a lot about the inequities we have in our society, particularly in Milwaukee, and I'm from Detroit originally, so we have a lot of the same symptomatic issues. Yeah, yeah. I commend what you're doing. Um, being a former restaurant owner, you know, it's not just about making money or being in the, in the business, but it's also about imprinting on the lives of people that work for you. So how are you making your money? Because food cost is a Bear. Owning a restaurant's a scam. No, uh, <laughs> uh, I agree. <laughs> we, it's, it's hard for us to keep up, particularly because we have such turnover and we employ so many young people. It's part of why we're here with you guys today. It's really hard for me to say no to a young person who comes in and says, hey, I just had a baby. 17, I gotta get a job, I don't know what to do. If we were just a regular restaurant, we'd be going like gangbusters. But because of what we do, and because of the nature of our staffing, it's a little more difficult. Um, we do a lot of catering, which helps us keep up. We sell a lot of chicken, that's kind of our, our real money maker. The chicken is good. By Great, because I have nothing, that's all him. I have nothing to do with the chicken anymore. <laughs> the chicken's real good. So in addition to employment, what are some of the other life skills that you're training? It taught me a lot, you know, working together, uh, working with, new people, getting to meet new people. Like where I grew up in the inner city of Milwaukee, you know, it was very bad and streets and taught me things about life. Responsibility is a life changer. Like I can go out, find an apartment because of the experience of working with Caitlin. It's easy to say well, working on the business versus working in the business, but do you have some time to go focus on some of those events where you could do catering? Yeah, and that's actually where we're just now at. So I'm not there right now and he's not there right now. So we're getting to a place where everyone is trained up enough that I am able to focus more attention on stuff like that. And that has been probably the past two months of the process. I have a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wondering what the heck is he's going back to, at the shop, right? trying to get me to go home a little earlier and maybe oh. like. <laughs> Caitlin, are you a 501c3? No. Could and you I, be? I would like sure, to be, and I've tried to look into Six another process. 6% back to your bottom to line. Your, your mission is to help people, isn't it? Since you only work 90 hours a week, what do you do in the other hours? Uh, sleep and cry. No, <laughs> um, no I just thought I'd ask. I, I, no, I've been able to leave a lot earlier uh, lately, which is good. No, I, mostly I focus on this. This is all I do. It's my day and my night. I've got a partner at home who's really supportive, and I can go home and kind of be like, "Oh my God, what's going on?" But we're finally at a place, like I said a couple That's of times. It's our life. Bro. Yeah, it's it's your life too. Yeah. Pretty much, I only hire people who don't have a life, yeah. and then that way, I know that they're always going to be at work. Smart boy. Really boy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, thank you for awesome. what you're thank doing, you. and yeah. thank yeah. you for the presentation. It was nice meeting you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice yeah. Well, nice to see you. Good you work. Yeah. Okay, let's talk and eat chicken. Yes. Yeah, Nancy, mm -hmm. so I'll ask you the first question. Now, you brought up a 501c3, and that job creation is the, is the main goal here, and workforce development comes to mind in getting some level of governmental support. Yep. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I can I can definitely appreciate what she's saying with the population that she's trying to work with and how some of the hoops of having some of the state dollars mm -hmm. or whatever else might be difficult for her. But if she tr transitions to a 501c3 and they definitely qualify because of what they're doing, she could, that's that's another source of charitable donations. It's mm -hmm. another level, and, that, and that's 6% to her bottom line. And Yeah, I love that idea. When I owned the Milwaukee Wave, it was hard to get sponsors and money for the Wave. Mm -hmm. But when we started the Wave of Hope, which yes. was helping many nonprofits, people were more willing to give and corporations were willing to give because you were helping all the families and 
uh, youth in southeastern Wisconsin. Some good and there insights. are a lot of, you know, people always say, you know, we can't find employees. Well, there are a lot of employees. It's just they're not employable right now. Yeah. They don't have the life skills or the job skills. And so that's what she's really providing right now. And it's a launching pad. It's a stepping Absolutely. stone for Absolutely. potentially Absolutely. bigger and better things. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And it seems like she has the patience to help them yes. where not a lot of employers want to go through all it. that. Right, right. Yeah. right.